Hello, this is Tina. How are you doing today? And uh, in this video, we can, we will take the details about the event loop in Node.js. So, what is event loop? Uh, uh, we can say it's a loop which uh, make Node.js to be th single thread. Uh, or you can say a event loop is a loop. Uh, keep uh, take a look at the stack and uh, the callback queues and pushing the stack, uh, pushing the callback into the stack to run when the stack is empty, right? And uh, inside the node, it doesn't only has one callback; it has seven. Uh, so let, let me see. Okay, let's talk about it one by one. So when the program starts, it will go to something called a timer. Okay, the event loop will check the timer, this queue first. What's inside this uh, timer? This queue will store the callbacks from set time out and set interval the first argument of set time out and set interval is uh, uh, the callback function right so when you have them it will put in a timer this queue so this is uh, the then it will go to the second one second one is io callbacks What is this here? Suppose you make a connection to a uh, MongoDB, uh, later on we'll talk about database. And uh, if you make a connection, it will accept, it will ask you for a callback, which is once connected successfully, what gonna uh, be, what should I do? Everything is event based, right? What's connected successfully, it will the callback it will put in this IO callback queue and then the event loop will go through after timer it will go to the IO callback if it has it will run a push to the stack to execute okay next one is idle this thing this one is used internally so we don't care about this one we don't go deep on this one next one is something called a pull 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 okay this one is uh, for receiving the uh, connection requests like if you have incoming connections what I did is uh, suppose the event loop go to here and uh, you have uh, uh, like uh, if, if you have a new a client make a new request comes it will be received by this one and if it doesn't have other things to do in the event loop it will immediately execute and if it has it will go to the there was it was it will wait for next turn okay like if you have incoming connections all the things will go here and uh, next one next one is a check in a client javascript actually you already um learn three like a three uh, um, like uh, what's the the timer functionality method set time out set interval and uh, set immediate so whatever the callback in you used in the set immediate the callback it will be pushed in this queue and eventually we have another one which is a close suppose you close a socket and or you close uh, when you receive a file if you have a close which is the file already received okay or if you have a database connection and you close then all the callbacks will be pushed in the queue 
and uh, when your application starts the event loop will start with the timer queue and uh, it uh, then it will go to I'll call backs idle pull check close queue and once the close queue is done it will go back and uh, till the timer and start again okay it will go back and then start again like this is the event loop it will go through one by one and uh, one thing is i forgot the exact number i just thought about for each queue suppose here has one thousand uh, ten thousand callbacks here it doesn't mean event loop will run all the 10, uh, 10, 000, uh, 10 000 callbacks and go to next one. It has a limited number. So for timer, probably just run 100. For the, uh, for the remaining, it will wait for the next cycle okay and for also for callback pull it doesn't run which means clear all the callbacks it has a certain limit so every callbacks will have a chance to run otherwise if you run all of them it's gonna block all other entire thing right so this is the event loop in the knowledge.js and uh, the difference is uh, in the chrome you only has uh, one callback queue but in the knowledge.js we have uh, lots like uh, we have uh, timer check pull close or others like uh, here if we open a file system we want to write something into the file or read some file it's gonna go to the io callbacks okay so that's it for this one and the next one we will write some demos to show you um, the order okay uh, thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.